The barbell back squat is highly overrated is a take that I have heard far too often, and it is something that I'm going to try and refute today for you guys. The three things that I'm gonna talk about specifically uh, that are things that every one of these coaches who says that the barbell back squat is overrated brings up uh, are femur length, or just in general uh, length of certain joint segments, and uh, the way that people are built. Usually it has to do with hips and whether they're antiverted or retroverted or whatever, okay? Well, basically what you're born with. Next, we're gonna talk about the individual's ability to assess whether or not the barbell back squat or you know barbell squat, whether it's front squat, overhead squat, their ability to assess whether it is good for them. I'm going to put that into question. And then finally, this idea that everyone is such an individual that we can refute any exercise's validity based off of uh, any individual bounds we create. So this individual is different than this individual, therefore this individual has to have an entirely different assessment for this movement. While that may be true to a certain extent, we need to be able to train. We need to be able to move. And there needs to be some level of uniformity across most human beings, especially most human beings that wanna train. So those are the three things that I'm gonna attack and I'm gonna take you through a back squat workout uh, throughout this entire thing. So let's go. Brand new t-shirts are out. We've got the no excuses, just improve metal giraffe t-shirt. It's available now on barbellapparel.com slash calendar, along with all of my other t-shirts that I have, as well as my favorite pieces of apparel on Barbell Apparel website. Um, outside of just amazing shirts and the ZT shirts, I think that their pants are the best pants possible. I wear their jeans when I go out. I can wear their jeans if I wanna feel comfortable in something other than gym clothes. Even their gym clothes are the best on the market in my opinion. So go to barbellapparel.com slash calendar and get yourself one of these shirts and some other stuff too. So this particular take, or at least the reason why I'm making this video is based off of this Instagram post from a guy named Ben Yanes. Ben Yanes, I believe, is a coach of some sort, some sort of strength and conditioning coach, um, but he definitely has uh, a really good background, really legit background in kinesthesiology uh, and understanding of biomechanics. So I will not take that away from it. Ben Yanes, as well as Athlean X, Eugene Teo, Greg Doucette, so on and so forth, continuously have this take uh, and I've argued against it quite a few times on my channel against those guys um, with all due respect of course um, but today I'm gonna be kind of focusing on this and and you'll notice that a lot of the verbiage he uses here is similar verbiage that you will see on, uh, throughout YouTube in this next slide you see the difference between squats hurt my back and squats are the best quad exercise ever. And essentially, he's pointing to femur length. And this is, this kind of falls in line with the, the number three argument and basically the individuality clause of all training. Um, and almost automatically we say, okay, long femurs, back squat bad. To me, it doesn't seem like a very solid argument. One, because anecdotally, I have probably the longest femurs in this gym, uh, and most gyms for that matter. And I train with a lot of people with very short femurs. And one of the guys in particular that I train with, his name is uh, Owen, and he, he's with Sika Strength. And Owen is a guy who can back squat immediately, and, and it's gonna be a great exercise for him. It's gonna feel great, it's gonna look great. And the reason for that is because to have his hips crease go below his knee crease, his knees don't have to travel as far forward as mine do, um, because his femurs are probably half the length of mine. Owen is like right around five foot six, five foot seven. I'm six foot four, and I have incredibly long legs. Now here's the thing, because even though Owen is good at the squat, I'm not doing what Owen does when I squat. I'm not thinking the way that Owen thinks. I'm not saying, oh, well, because Owen back squats this way, back squat not for me, <laughs> right? Like, oh, short man back squat, tall man cannot back squat. No, we have to kind of 
reassess what the back squat means and certain motor patterns. So if you guys haven't noticed, I've been sitting in this squat the entire time. And this is basically the first step to trying to understand how you can take someone who's just an average Joe, regular person, to actually back squatting properly. This has so much more carryover and so much more importance to benefiting you in the back squat or just benefiting you in everyday life than a lot of people care to reference. So when I teach anyone the back squat, this is the first step. Can you get down into the bottom of a freestanding squat? Can you get your hip crease below your knee crease? If you can and you can freestand, can you open up your chest? Can you sit up a little bit more upright? And if you can't, I will help you go do that right now. So no matter what your femur length, we want to be able to do a freestanding squat. So the first thing that I do is I'll grab onto an upright like this and I'll just kind of pull myself into this position. Right away, if I'm new to this, I'll feel this compression in my knee and I'll say, wow, that really hurts. I'm not used to this, I don't like this. I'll also feel like my back needs to round. I'll feel like I want to fall this way. That's okay, just sit, you'll be all right. Just sit here until things kind of numb up a little bit. And I know that sounds weird, but that's what ends up happening. Then you can kind of wiggle around and slowly play this game where, oh, I can let go, oh, I'm gonna fall, and we can get used to doing this. Now, if we have this as our home base, the squat is a totally different thing, especially for long femur athletes such as myself. Now, what does this have to do with the barbell back squat being a perfectly rated, in my opinion, exercise? Well, I will explain. You guys see how tall I am? Look at that. Do not tell me that long femur athletes can't squat. I'm gonna show you guys right now that we can. So, let's say you're new to the gym and you wanna do some sort of leg workout. You don't wanna be that guy that doesn't do legs, okay? You think, well, the back squat, that is the movement to grow my legs. You see, you maybe have seen some stuff online, you might think that this sort of thing is intuitive. You automatically rack a barbell, put it on your back, and try to squat. What you've heard is weight in the heels, chest up. You rack the bar and you think, man, that was kind of awkward, but it is the back squat, it's pretty legit. Let's keep going up and wait. You think to yourself, well, let's slap on the old 45 pounder. Maybe then it'll actually feel like I'm working my legs. Again, chest up, weight in the heels, take a breath in and keep your belly tight. It's pretty much the only cues you're ever gonna hear in the squat. Okay, I guess that feels good on my legs. Just kind of feels like I'm squeezing in all the weird places. I'm gonna do a couple more sets of this, but then I'm gonna go to the leg press machine. You get on the leg press machine, you undo the little lever thingies, and you start doing reps. Because now, you start to feel it in your legs. Wow, this feels great. You rack the, the weights, you stand up and you go, that felt way better on my legs than that bullshit that I did over there. Why would I do that? Why would I wanna do something that doesn't work my legs as well as something that is easier and works my legs quicker? That right there is the problem. You think that you had a good assessment, when in reality, your assessment of a movement was complete bullshit. Let's go back to squatting. Do you guys remember that freestanding squat we did where we were down here? Now we can stand up just, or sit up just like this. Well, what if there was a way for us to re-engineer the squat to be starting from that position 
and then you know, creating our ability to press out of it. Here's what I mean. We were squatting like this, chest up, weight in the heels. Oh man, that shit sucks, dog. What if we were able to get back down to that bottom position that we had for the freestanding squat? What if we started the movement from down here? And now we stood up. That feels incredible. As somebody who was that person who put the barbell on my back with 45 pounds on each side and said, what the fuck am I doing? This style of squatting that I just showed you guys is not the same game. I don't look at someone with short femurs and say, well, I can't do what they do, so I'm never gonna back squat. No, I just re-engineer it. I think of something completely different. So that's what we're gonna do here today. I have, as someone who is six foot four with a six, seven wingspan, very short torso, long as hell femurs, squatted 230 kilos from basically nothing. Uh, and today, what I'm gonna do for you guys is ass to grass, squat, hopefully, over 190 kilos with a pause. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you can fight against this idea that back squats are not for you. Okay, so what I've added now, are weightlifting shoes. Some people call them squat shoes, but essentially what it allows you to do is have a little bit more dorsiflexion or the ability to have your knee travel forward. Now this is something that's gonna help so much in your squat as well, but it's not something that's absolutely necessary. So now the workout for us is gonna be put the bar in a high bar position. Now all we're gonna do is try and find that freestanding deep squat position that we've been working on. And if it's something that you can't do today, try and work towards it. Basically holding onto the upright, working around, finding a way that you can let go of the upright and free stand and hold. Try to get 30 seconds, then try to get a minute, then try to get two minutes, try to get five minutes. Once you're at that level, you'll probably be able to unrack a barbell and start squatting. So what I'm gonna do here is try and keep my gaze forward, sit in that freestanding position. Nice and slow, just try and fall in there. There we go, there's my balance. I feel nice and good here. And now I can stand up. Now there's so many granular aspects of squatting that people on the internet are gonna have you look at. Oh, are your hips rising? Oh, are your knees going into valgus? These are things that come when maybe you load too quickly. But in general, if your mindset around the squat isn't about load, and it isn't even about sets and reps, it's just about the aesthetic of it, meaning trying to get depth, trying to get into that bottom position, and then going from there, usually you're gonna be in a good place. So for those of you who are new squatters and you're frustrated by that old version of the squat that I told you, this would be something that you could try. Basically, unracking, sitting, and then from here, trying not to shoot your butt up, right? Or let your knees cave crazy, you know, like too much. Just standing from here. And you can do that for, kind of as many sets and reps as you want because you're a beginner and the intensity there is not gonna reach anything beyond your capabilities. I promise you, the body's a pretty robust thing. It's not gonna injure you if you do stuff like this. The next thing and final thing I wanna talk about is this individuality clause when it comes to weight training. In particular, the person that I think of is Greg Doucette. And actually, if we look at that Ben Yanes post, I would say your assessment of your body then should determine the style in which you progress throughout a movement. I am not going to throw out the barbell back squat because of the way that you look or, or the way that your joints are set up or you know the length of your fib tib or your femur. No, I'm going to try and get you to to do this in a different way. So again, the example that I use is my buddy Owen. Him and I are both back squatting, but because my setup is different than his, I'm learning the back squat, I'm doing the back squat in a different way. This is where we need to have nuance around individuality. We can't just simply use individuality as an excuse as to why things 
uh, or why things aren't legitimate or why we can discredit certain things. This is on the cusp, and I'm not saying these guys are doing this, but this is on the cusp of charlatanism, where I can tell you why the things outside of my methodology aren't legitimate based off of something that is really hard to grasp. Just say, hey, that individual is different than that individual, therefore that movement or that methodology will not work on that individual even though it works on this one. And we can keep changing and manipulating those bounds to get what we want as somebody who's selling our program. Again, this is not what these guys are doing, but this is kind of the slippery slope of just continually having this type of discussion. In this post here, Ben Yane says, pick exercises that suit your anatomy and motion capabilities. There is zero reason to feel like you need to do squats. Now, this one is, pick exercises that suit your anatomy and motion capabilities. To somebody who is new to weight training, I am not going to trust their ability to assess their own anatomy and their own motion capabilities. They are not physiotherapists, they don't understand biomechanics, and they're completely relatively new to training. So if they've never learned to squat, they can't simply assess these things and say the squat is not good, right? That would take someone who's put in a lot of time and effort in the squat. And once that person has done that, I would argue that they're likely not going to throw away the barbell back squat. Does that make sense? That first part of the sentence is very skewed towards uh, you know, promoting what he has to say. Pick exercises that suit your anat anatomy and motion capabilities, meaning you have to have the knowledge to be able to pick those exercises. And I'm telling you that just because you can't do the back squat, that means you cannot ever do the back squat and you have to find things that work for you. Now we're getting a little heavier. I'm gonna try and keep my back tense, but I'm gonna find that bottom position and then push out of it. It's that simple. Two lifts, two lifts away, Nico. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm not wearing any knee sleeves, belt, wrist straps, anything like that. I am using squat shoes or heeled shoes, so I guess you could say I'm cheating. off that squat, I gotta collect myself a little bit. Look guys, I obviously have some biases here. I'm in a sport where full range of motion squatting is really a non-negotiable. You must be doing that quite a bit if you wanna get good at it. Um, and not only have I coached so many different body types and so many different skill levels of, and so many different people who have zero training age to power lifters who are super strong. I've coached them all how to do a barbell back squat and be successful with it. Doesn't matter limb length or the setup in their hips at all. Not only have I done that, but I was also a personal trainer working with people from 18 years of age all the way up to 80 years of age. And I had them do some form of a squat now, it wasn't always barbell squat, but I felt it was necessary for that person to build as much possible range of motion in their squat. And then once I had them able to do that, they could barbell back squat if they wanted to. If I wanted them to, they could. It was not an issue of whether or not they were built for it. Now today, I was able to work up to a very deep 
uh, 197 kilo or 400, what, 35 pound back squat with a legitimate pause, no knee sleeves, uh, no belt, no nothing. And that is strictly because I wanted to find a way to do it. And I think a lot of people are gonna see this video and, and their big response is, well, I don't wanna put that much effort into something where I can just get a stimulus doing something else. And I'm not the biggest fan of that mindset. Sure, if you wanna grow your quads and you wanna do all these things, that's fine. But the kinesthetic awareness, the proprioception gain from having a freestanding squat and then being also able to control a, a, a near maximal effort back squat with full range of motion, I think that that is worthwhile for everyone. I think that a healthy individual should be able to stand in a freestanding squat. I think that a healthy individual should be able to throw near their body weight on their back at most ages and be able to get down into a deep body weights or into a deep barbell back squat and stand back up. That is what I personally believe. And when I continually hear personal trainers, coaches, physiotherapists argue their way out of ever using or trying to get anyone else to use movements like the barbell back squat, it's incredibly frustrating because the nuance that lies within all of training is just too big to count certain movements out. That's just my opinion and I hope you guys liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe and I'll see you later.